I'm Calvin Dela. I'm Cole Dela. I'm Shayla Dunaway, and this is my husband, Tom Dunaway. Welcome to episode 6 with LTD Sailing. This morning, the crew woke up anchored in the crystal blue waters off Petite St. Vincent. After a quick swim, it's time for another exam, Basic Coastal Cruising ASA 103. The class dives into navigation and learns how to do a cross-bearing fix. The crew's been a little heavy on the water consumption, so now they're going to do some docking practice over at Petite Martinique and top up the tanks. Next up, manoeuvre board drills on the catamaran. Then a nice sail around to Sandy Island just off Cariacou. They get to practice picking up a mooring ball and enjoy lobster barbecue on Sandy Island with our friend Ross to Tim. It's beautiful. It slows the boat due to the large rudder blank. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. It's been uh, a lot of learning, but it, uh, it hasn't been without uh, a lot of enjoyment. So I can think of worse places to take a test, that's for sure. I'm making a ham and cheese wraps. Mm. This one's yours. Three point six nautical miles. So this is a handbrake compass. It's just like a regular compass, except that it's got this little eyepiece, the little viewfinder that we look into, and we're going to see magnified. So we'll see very accurately the, the compass heading, and also just over the top of it, we're going to be able to sight an object like the peak on that hill. So if I look over there, look kind over of Cole's head. I'm looking in here and I see that, and it looks like it's at about 195 degrees from our position where, our, where we are right now. Now if I add another line in there, we're where those two lines intersect. And if I get a third one, that just kind of makes us even more accurate. You see inside it? Can you see the numbers yeah. inside there? One ninety-six. Okay. So now we got our points. So our first one is one ninety-six. So one eighty, one ninety, one ninety-five, one ninety-six. Now that I've got that, I'm just gonna bump my parallel rulers up against the two legs there, and I've got my one ninety-six. Okay. Now I just gotta walk that over to. The peak on Petite Martinique, it's a little bit of a walk. There we go. Looks like we're lined up pretty good there. We're on that line of position, right? Good. Where those two intersect is probably where we are, right there. We're gonna run the third one. Our third one was off the west side of PSV, 330, and if those all intersect, then we know we're doing good. So we'll pick the center of our little triangle there. So yeah, there's another way. So we don't really need that GPS. You guys, you were asking this morning, do we really got to turn on the GPS? Nope. You can get out the hand bearing compass and do a cross bearing fix. Any questions on that? Oh, that was kind of cool. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Kind of fun to see, kind of taking a little bit to the next level. We are weighing anchor and heading over to Petite Martinique to top up our water tanks. This is a great opportunity to practice stocking. This dock is a little tricky. The angle of the dock to the prevailing wind and current is a little off, and the wooden cleats are not always dependable. 
It's a good way to put our docking skills to the test. <laughs> I was driving. It took a couple swings, but uh, we got it. A little unexpected cleat. Uh, this one over here uh, decided I didn't want to be a cleat anymore, and it was just a wood block. So we uh, we had to have a little extra, uh, a little extra hard on the uh, port throttle to hang on to that spring line. Or, but uh, we got it in. Just in time for the drone to land. Time to learn man overboard drills on the catamaran. We're going to use the same technique with the cat that we use on Dog Smile, the Bob Ward modified quick stop. Ready? Yep, yeah, let's throw him in. Remember, right. yell, man overboard. Man overboard. Throw flotation. Go hard over. And you're just watching for here and listening yeah. for your one boat length. Assign a spotter who will also call out boat lengths. Let's uh, call boat lengths for One boat length. So let's looking for this 90. Fall off to a beam reach for one boat length. Now attack back the other way, hard over. Yeah, so it's just, there's no finesse. Yeah. Hard one way, hard the other way. Tack without letting the jib come across. This really helps the catamaran come around quickly. Steer the boat back to the person in the water. Once you reach the MOB, turn the rudder hard to windward and ease the mainsail. This will stop the boat and bring it into a hove to position. Recovering from the person from the water will now be much easier. Great job everyone on the man overboard drills. We're gonna make a short passage from the area between Petite St. Vincent and Petite Martinique over to Sandy Island. Sandy Island is a marine protected area just off the west coast of Karakou. Let's go sailing. Remember, when furling the jib, you want to bear away and blanket it with the main to avoid excess load on the sail and protect it from violently luffing. Notice, Cole is easily bringing in the jib by hand. No need for a winch. 
Yeah, there you go. We're just looking for that double wrap. Keeping it yachty. Nothing looks more sloppy than sails hanging out of an unzipped sail bag. On top of that, the worst thing for a Dacron sail is UV damage. The crew is on it. We are arriving at Sandy Island and getting ready to pick up our first mooring ball. We're gonna run the one from the port side. We're just gonna swing around the front and hook it up over on this side somewhere so it's handy. We can get it on this side. I will have somebody hooking the mooring ball, bring it up, and it's got a, an eye in it. We're just gonna put one of our lines through. Ideally, we're gonna walk that up forward, put the next one through, and the one will hook on the starboard. Starboard line goes back to starboard, port line goes back to port, and there we are. We're gonna do all that right here at the shroud, okay? Because from right here at the shroud, we can talk to each other really easily, and we can see what's going on a lot better. So it just helps a lot with the communication. Rather than trying to do it up in the bow, where we can't see anything, we do it right back here, it makes it nice and easy. So looking here as we're driving by this one, you guys, see the pennant that's coming off the top? Yep. All we gotta do is hook that pennant. Coming in on a uh, mooring ball for the first time as a group. So this will be fun. We're gonna, gonna be able to come in head to wind. Yeah. Hopefully we got some room to maneuver down there because I've never actually done this before. I uh, did help grab the hook a couple ball a couple times with the charter group, but that's about the extent of it. So looking forward to actually uh, Actually trying to man the boat while uh, everybody else tries to grab the ball and seeing if I can help them out a little bit by keeping them on the ball as best as I can. So hoping I don't make their jobs too difficult and I hope they, uh, they help me out a little bit too with a quick hook. The key to picking up mooring is planning and preparation. Make sure everyone knows their job and are in position. Get your line set up and your boat hook handy. Take a good look at the mooring ball before you try to pick it up. Know what you're dealing with. We have found that the best way to pick up a mooring ball is at the shrouds on the same side as the helm. This allows the helmsman to better see the mooring ball. It also allows the person picking up the mooring and the helm to communicate more easily. No yelling. Remember, preparation is key and take your time. Anchoring and picking up mooring balls is a spectator sport. Just don't be the spectator. Walk it forward, walk it forward, get it turned. Here you go, bring yours through the eyelet right here, real quick. There you go, Sheila. Outside of everything. Good. We're gonna go around the base. Now cross over. And then switch. Alright, same on your side, Jayla. If you could throw those on the outside. Now, you guys, let's look. Is the bridal balance? It's a little reverse just so we can come back and see how it looks. Looks good. Pretty good. Good enough. It's been really good. Also, everybody kind of rotates through all the all the various positions for the various tasks. So I think everybody gets you know a good equal fair chance at everything. Learn uh, and learns how everything. each each aspect runs yeah. because it's not all just driving the boat. And as much as I like just driving the boat, uh, <laughs> I need to be able to work the lines and set the hook and all that stuff too because I can't just bogart the yeah. wheel. And it's uh, and good. with sailing in general, you know, you um, you want it's not just being able to drive the boat and work the sails, but all of the other skills that go with it. You know, the anchoring, mooring. We did a, our first mooring tonight and we've had some really, a lot of fun actually, I think, practicing our man overboard drills, yeah. um, which would not be typically be a fun scenario, but um, you know, to kind of go through the exercise has been uh, very helpful and enjoyable for me. And then also things like uh, approaching a dock and working the the motors um, has been, you know, good experience. So yeah, I still think the hardest part about, at least for me, the hardest part about docking is getting the darn fenders out <laughs> <laughs> and at the right height. <laughs> like I hate that more than I hate the rest of docking. <laughs> but yeah, docking's been it's been fun and it's been. I'm looking forward to getting out on our first charter and feeling confident in those skills having had the experience and not not dreading the end of the trip the entire time because I'm gonna have to put a boat back on a dock. 
You know, it's fun to make a boat move like that, and God, you can't do it in a more beautiful place. We uh, had to take two tests so far. We've passed with uh, pretty good colors both times, but man, yeah. today, today taking that second te test off of the right off of PSV uh, Petite Saint Vincent was just one of the most stunning places I've ever been. The coolest and, classroom ever. Yeah, exactly. And we've had fun fun reviews beforehand, which has helped a lot. Shayla found some flashcards online that she uh, she printed off, and we've been going through those as a group, which is nerded out a little bit. Nerded out a little bit, but it's really <laughs> helped the test taking. It's t it's fun w talking it through with everybody else too, because people have different insights, and mm -hmm. talking it through, you kind of learn more of the. You're not just memorizing a fact, or uh, you know, the answer to that question is this. You're kind of getting the theory and practical uses behind those things. So it's been good, and from a learning perspective in that sense too, and. Yeah. Definitely more to learn, but we've been learning. I think the amount that we've learned by doing has been really good, and it's really, mm -hmm. really set us up well for the test mm -hmm. to feel confident. And Moderately stuff. confident, but it'll just yeah. come from here. Yeah, exactly. We're we're excited though. We're uh, we're looking forward to the the adventures that this this opportunity will create for us. So. Yeah. level with some of his other dishes. Rum punch isn't bad either. Rum yeah. punch is definitely not bad. <laughs> wow. We're about to eat some awesome lobster. Uninhabited Island in the Caribbean. Drinking rum punch. Drinking rum punch. About to have some amazing food. Tim puts on a mean lobster barbecue and what a beautiful setting out under the stars on a deserted Caribbean island. Have you ever done a man overboard drill on a catamaran? With the right technique, you'll get it, no problem. What would you name your man overboard dummy? Bob and Wilson are ready taken. Leave your best picks in the comments below. Are you ready to come sailing in the Caribbean? Check out the LTD Sailing website for more information.